Let's take a look at the SD card that's contained in the box of the new My Witness. On the SD card is two folders. One contains your software, one contains the configuration file. If you're gonna run the software, decide which one you want. So in this case, inside the folder, we've got Mac and Windows. It's worth checking on our website to see if there's a newer version of the software available. In most cases, there will be because we're constantly updating the camera. When you've decided on the software that you want to use, you unload the zip file onto your computer and install the software. Let's have a look at an SD card that's already been used in the camera to see what differences are made on the SD card. In this case, we've got an event folder, normal folder, parking folder. These are new. These have been added by the camera itself. We've got a log text and a new configuration file. This configuration file saves all your settings. If you look inside the normal folder, for instance, we've got channel one videos and then further down we've got channel two videos. The videos are all sequentially numbered. Date is shown here and the time is shown there. If you look at the date, it's 2015, the 11th month, the ninth day. And then if you look at the time, it's eight o'clock in the morning, 45 minutes and 31 seconds. So it's easy to identify which file is the file that you need. The software is dead easy to use. You've got a front camera view, rear camera view, accelerometer view, map of London, and your files. You'll notice that as we've opened the software, the files are missing, yet we have an SD card in the computer. You have to go to this folder icon here, click on the folder icon, and in this case, it's gone straight to STB11, which is our SD card. But you can see here that what you would need to do maybe is drop down your box, have a look for the card. So here's the card in itself, and then load the card in. Now, don't go deep into the card. In other words, just load the card. Don't open any of the folders. Click on open, and what it will do is it will import the files into the computer software. The more observant of you will notice that there is a date of 2012 here. It's not that we've had the camera since 2012. Before the camera gets GPS, it will default to 2012. When the camera gets GPS, it will show you the correct date. So in this case here, we've got 2015th, the 11th, which is November, and the 9th day. We have here two o'clock in the morning, and if we click on this one, we have eight o'clock and nine o'clock. Now we're more interested in the 2015 videos. So let's click on the nine o'clock. Let's go down to a nine o'clock normal recording. So if we pick 914, for instance, here's a normal recording and here is an event recording. You can choose between them so we can turn parking off and normal off and we'll only have the event showing. If we turn events off, we don't have anything showing. So make sure you select at least one of them and then we'll turn normal back on and we'll turn parking back on. There are no parking videos on this one because the camera's not been wired up for parking mode at the moment. And if we go back down, we'll pick nine and then we'll pick 914, for instance, 02. And here we are, so let's just pause this. We can turn the volume down so you can hear me. And what we have is a car in front of us, set of traffic lights, car, no cars behind us. We've got a car in lane two. And we've got a cyclist coming up behind us. This is our accelerometer. So it shows the lumps and bumps in the road or if someone hits us. This is our map and you can now see on the map where I am. It's moved over to Collins Street, which is in Nottingham. We can have a map view, we can have a satellite view, so we can see a satellite view. And as you look down here, you can see that this is where the traffic lights are. We'll go back to the map view. We can obviously zoom in and out and quite a cool, funky little feature that Google gave us a few years back, which is street view. Well, we can also utilize street view. So there we are, middle lane, looking at the traffic lights. This is the same place. So if we just click on the cross, we can come away. Now we can swap between these videos. So if we want to see the rear camera in a larger screen, we can go up to this icon here, click on it, and it swaps the two over. The icon on the left allows you to adjust the video. So this is the color setting. So if we just move down here, um, this is the rear display highlighted. This is the rear display. For instance, if we want to go old school, uh, not that one, but we want to change to black and white, we can change to black and white. These features are quite useful for trying to get more information out of the image. Um, you can obviously overexpose the color. You can come down, it's about 33% or thereabouts, which I think we have on as default. 
um, we can change the contrast or we can make it brighter and darker just depends what you need to do on there um, go back to the default we can do the same with the front display so this would be the front display and obviously we can do saturation we can turn it to black and white go back to default again on there once you save your settings that's what it will do but it only does it in the software it doesn't do it in the video so with your videos that come off the camera will be as they are preset so if we swap back now we can go back on the screen we get the version of the software down here we get the date and time we get our miles per hour and we get the voltage of the vehicle 13 and a half volts we've got our play features so we can play we can pause we can go backwards and forwards we can speed it up and slow it down and we can change the volume as you saw this is the position on the video we're playing so we can skip up and down the video um, and here is our speed so i'm stationary we've got cyclists behind us we've got the car behind us and again if we swap around we should be able to read the number plate on there uh, camera's a little bit low so we can't see the cyclist but we know he's there and swap back again now up here we've got some setting choices so for instance here the camera setting will allow us to save an image or a video so if we choose BMP image we can choose the front and rear it's going to save a video image or it's going to save a clip of the two videos but it's going to save the still that we're looking at of the two videos and it's going to save it in documents we can obviously choose where we want to save it there so for instance let's save it to desktop um, and do open and now we've got two videos channel one channel two save those um, they've been saved and you'll notice here I've got a little file if I double click on the file uh, you can see here that we've saved the video file and got the details now the camera's looking backwards you're getting a mirror image that's normal don't worry about that you can change the image you can rotate the images but we can still read the number plate that's the important thing so we can still clearly read the number plate we can still see what happened and again on here we've got the front video so this is the front video this is what you can accept on the front video and again we can read the registrations and see what's happening there's a red light there's change to an orange light and so on and so on all great stuff but we'll get rid of those two we don't need those anymore and then on the next one here this is uh, the printer icon if we click the printer icon this allows us to again take two stills it allows the date out you know the year the minutes the hours the minutes and the seconds or well, the year sorry the year the month the hours minutes and seconds and that's the details there below is your GPS location and your speed this is the G sensor information and the accelerometer and memo memo is you can type something in here and then transfer it down to here and then when you're happy you can print that out and you can send that of course to your insurance company or whatever you might need to do to create your reports and then the next setting which is the cog we can click on the cog now what it's going to do is again it's going to look for the SD card so we need to go down to the SD card and we need to pick the configuration file config that and then say open and then what we do is we get our settings screen first screen general gives you your time and your summer time so you can choose what country you're in for instance we want zero zero for london currently it's winter so we don't need summer time but if you click summer time it'll chuck it an hour forward if you unclick it it will bring it back and then we've got our parking mode now parking mode works in several ways we can have it so it records for a set length of time before it turns off or we can have it record below here as you can see here we can have it record until it meets that voltage now default would be 48 hours and 12.3 volts if for instance you set it for one hour what will happen is when you take the key out of the ignition and this is subject to the camera being wired with the three wire hard wire kit if you take the key out of the ignition after an hour the camera will shut down doesn't matter what the voltage will be but if the voltage drops below 12.3 volts before that hour is up the camera will shut down so we set it for 48 hours and we can also choose here what voltage we want the majority of cars will go down to about 12.1 volts quite comfortably below that it becomes questionable um, it really is down to the type of car how sensitive the car is to low voltage what state of condition your battery is and everything else there's a separate video on parking mode going into a lot more detail but you need to choose what voltage you want and that's a bit hit and miss but have a look at the other video high temperature cutoff that is for the days when we actually get some nice sunny weather in the UK 
If it's hot and it gets really hot inside your car, it could potentially damage the camera. If you're worried about damaging your camera, turn the high temperature cut off on. What happens if the camera gets too hot, it will power down. Security LED is a little LED next to the lens on the front of the camera. You can turn that on and off. In this case, it's on. If you want a bit more privacy, you can turn it off. If you change any of these settings, when you've changed the setting, click apply. That will save that setting to the configuration file. If you don't click apply, it won't change the setting. Recording, we've obviously got microphone volume. That's what it's listening to. If you get too much distortion, it's too noisy, lower it down. If it's not loud enough, turn it up. Speaker volume is the alerts and the bings and the bongs that you get from the camera. If they're annoying, turn them right down. If you can't hear them, turn them up, as simple as that. Video quality, normal, high and highest. In normal mode, you'll get maximum recording. In high mode, you'll get a little bit less recording time on your SD card. And in your highest recording mode, you'll get even less recording time on your SD card, but you'll obviously get the better picture. G sensor, this is for driving. Um, I had it low down here. But you know, it's, it's set about there, I believe, on default. The higher it is, the more sensitive it's going to be. The lower it is, the less sensitive it's going to be. Um, basically, leave it on about one, and that will pick up a decent sized pothole or someone running into your vehicle. And G Sensor for parking mode is exactly the same principle. It's looking for a bang, it's looking for someone to drive into your vehicle. The more sensitive you make it, the more chance it's going to pick up someone smacking your vehicle when you're in parking mode. And because you're not driving around at this point and jumping up and down potholes and over speed bumps, it doesn't really matter on the sensitivity here. The higher it is, the better it is in some ways because it's more likely to catch someone slightly dinking your vehicle. And then motion sensitivity parking mode is what the camera sees and how the camera does things. If the camera sees movement, it will save that file. So again, the more sensitive it is, the likelihood it is going to pick a leaf blowing past your vehicle. The least sensitivity uh, you have it set for is the less likely it's going to see someone walking past your vehicle. Wi-Fi extras, this is for your Wi-Fi so you can call the camera what you want, you can change your password, you can change the recording allocations, the percentage of allocation of recording to the SD card, 70%, 20%, 10%. So in other words, 70% normal recording, 20% event recording, and 10% parking mode. And obviously down here we can have our NSTC, American Standard, PAL, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and our language in English. And then additional here is for formatting and changing the time. Remember, if you change anything, click apply and then click OK and then take the SD card and put it into your camera.